Hello guys and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how we solve one of the biggest problems when working with Facebook Robin, which is deploying it into the cloud, being able to run multiple models simultaneously and finally achieve scalability so that you will not be stuck anymore running the models on your local machine. But stay with me until the end of the video, because after I show you the whole process that you can apply by yourself in your business, I'm going to give you one extra tip, a tool that will allow you to do the full process of a marketing mix modeling from data integration to feature engineering and selection up to the models, training, selection, and analysis, as well as the budget locator in a completely no code interface. So even if you have no background of statistics, of coding, and you are new to marketing mix modeling, you will be able to run your marketing mix model completely from start to finish in a matter of minutes in a guided environment. So. First things first, let's start with what we will see in this video step-by-step. Step. First thing we will see, what is Scaleway? Scaleway is the platform that we are going to use to do this, um, to deploy Facebook, Robin. So uh, we'll get an overview of what Scaleway is first and then how we can create and connect to an instance of Scaleway. And finally, how we can install Facebook Robin in the instance to then train our first model. After that, again, I'll give you the extra tip about the tool that I'm talking about. So, okay, first things first, what is Scaleway? Scaleway is a cloud platform which has a range of different services coming from um, serverless solutions to storage and databases to network like um, load balancers, domains, DNS, and of course, compute uh, instances available as well, both like CPU, GPU optimized, memory optimized. So there is pretty much anything that you might need for your um, technical infrastructure. This video is in no way sponsored uh, by Scaleway, so uh, we're just sharing what we are using. If it's your first time, definitely you will have to sign up. In our case, of course, we are already registered, so uh, I just had to, to log in real quick. And actually, the first thing that you will want to do is to create a pair of SSH keys. I'm not going to, uh, to go over what it is. Uh, there is tons of tutorial on the web. But first things first, you want to open a, um, a terminal uh, if you are on a, uh, I guess it will work for Windows as well. In case, just check how to generate as keys on Windows and currently on Mac, this will work for um, li Linux as well. Uh, but basically, place yourself uh, in, a, in a folder in which you will want to contain your SSH key and simply run SSH keygen uh, minus B, you can change these other um, these are like uh, the dimension of the keys, basically, and the type. Um, so it, it will prompt me to to give him where I want to save my keys. And I'm just going to give him this path with the name key. Uh, it's going to ask me for the passphrase of this. So just whatever you want. Of course, you need to remember this uh, to be able to use the SSH keys later on. Uh, I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, I uh, generated two keys. So let me uh, open this one real quick. I can see that in my folder, I have a key and a key.pub. Uh, the public one is the one that you will want to add to Scaleway in order to connect to your instances later on. Uh, but basically, you can simply open this with anything like, uh, I'm going to use Sublime Text, and you'll see it's a string that looks something like this. Just copy everything. And then on Scaleway, you can go like uh, on top right on your account and go SSH keys. And in this page, you will want to do add an SSH key and just pass it here. You can add a description like uh, production development or whatever. And basically what you're doing here, you are creating some sort of um, connection uh, that will authenticate you when trying to connect to the virtual instances via SSA. So now that we did this and we loaded our SSH key in um, in Scaleway, uh, everything you need to do is simply to go over here on compute and go on instances and press plus over here. Then you'll be prompted to choose a availability zone. Uh, this really is up to you if you have any limitations in terms of uh, ge geography uh, where you want your servers to be uh, or otherwise just check the cost because different zones are having to are going to have different costs. So let's say uh, Paris one is estimated at 0 0.22 uh, cent an hour. While maybe if I go like on um, Paris three, you'll see that it goes up to 0 0.33. You may want to 
uh, to test a little bit with the zone and pick one that works for you. I'm going to go with Warsoft 2 and I'm going with the cost optimized app for this video, but definitely you, you will see all the specifications over here in terms of CPUs, memories, uh, bandwidth. So uh, pick whichever works best for you. I'm going to go with GP1-M uh, for the moment. This is like the average one we use um, for development. Uh, and then you can click, uh, oh, sorry, just scroll down a little bit. Ubuntu uh, is the OS image that you want to go with. Uh, and then we usually add the volume of around 100 to 150 gigabytes. And simply you can call this with the system volume and then give it like a, uh, I'm going to go with Robin tutorial. And then on the SSH keys, you will see the ones that are available basically. Um, in my case, it's like two keys I have over here. Uh, you will all definitely have whatever you added in your account. And that is going to be just an estimated cost. So if you want to know, okay, how much is it going to cost if I keep this on all the time? Uh, it's going to be 950 a day, uh, which is around 290 a month. Uh, or basically you can see the cost per hour because basically when you're not using it, you can turn it off and you're going to uh, charge uh, for nothing. Uh, as you can see, our instance is a uh, 64 gigabytes of memory, 16 cores. Um, and then basically you can just go and create an instance. Let me fast forward. Okay. Uh, in a few seconds, the instance will be on. You will see that it is currently uh, running. Uh, you can turn it off anytime over here. Um, and this, this will not delete the instance, not delete the... Uh, the, the data on, on the instance, so everything will stay there. Uh, it's simply going to, like if you turn off your computer. Uh, so what you want to go is over here, go and copy the public IP, and then go back to your terminal, and I change directory to, basically you need to be in the same directory of your uh, key, so yours will be maybe the tutorial. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use one of the keys already available. And you want to go like SSH minus I, and then the path to your not the public one, but the private one. In my case, it's like uh, the slash key. And then you go with truth at and pass, and pass the uh, IP that you just copied. This is going to tell you if it's the first time. Are you sure you want to um, trust this one? I'm going to, pre uh, to put yes. And that is going to ask for the passphrase that you said earlier on your... So at this point, as you can see, uh, the prompt changed and now we are in root at dot at robin tutorial so currently we are using the terminal of this instance over here and now you want to run uh, a few comments that i'm going to show you uh, to basically install everything you need so the first one is going to be apt get update to basically update all the default um, packages in the instance as soon as this has finished you want to run apt my dad i okay apt install airbase core you are going to install r in this instance this will prompt you with a do you want to continue yes or not so i'm going to type in uh yes and uh, enter all right so after a little bit it will be done and then the next one is uh is going to be sudo apt get install libcar uh, for open ssl and libxml to dev so again i'm going to enter uh it's going to ask to to a confirmation yes and continue okay after this one we can go with sudo apt install cmake again confirmation and enter and uh both this one the previous one and the next one as well are going to prompt you with something like this uh you can simply press tab a couple of times until you um you get to the cancel button and then press enter uh, since we don't want to restart anything yet. And then the last one is going to be uh, sudo apt install libssl-dev. Again, confirmation and go. Okay, again, a uh, couple of tabs, cancel and enter. Okay, at this point, we basically have anything that we need on the instance. In so now we can simply type a capital R and then enter and this will uh, move us into the R console. And here we will need to install a couple um, R packages before installing Robin. So the first one is going to be install the packages remote and then enter, followed by uh, install packages data.table. This will be needed to load uh, data sets from CSV files. And then finally, uh, we can run the remote install GitHub Robin, or if you prefer, you can use the, uh, the Chrome version. 
Uh, so this one is going to take a little longer because in the background is, is it is going to install every other uh, dependency of Robin. So I'm going to run and then fast forward to the moment uh, it completes the installation. All right, so a few minutes in and you will prompt finally with something that looks like this, done Robin. Now consider that um, right now we are pretty much in the same of your art prompt at the bottom of your art studio. So if you run something like library Robin, it will actually import the library. So you can do like a uh, version package, or I guess it was the other way around. So package package version, and you will get the output, the same output as you will get in any other um, R prompt. So one of the things that you can do is simply like navigate to the demo R file of Robin and copy and paste like this couple of lines and go like data. And you will see that it is importing the, the default data and it's actually, actually outputting the uh, head uh, informations. Then you can go with the uh, input collect Robin inputs to set up the first part and then move on to the hyperparameter spire. So again, copy and paste. We can go with Robin input to check if the input's correct. You'll see running feature engineering and then the output, which hopefully is uh, okay. Yeah, that's a simple warning message on the uh, missing font, but this works. And then to finally validate if everything is working correctly, we can copy and paste this last one, and then going to so I'm going to lower the my bet. Okay, I'm going to go like three and two hundred just for the sake of testing it, and then going to prompt. And the very first time we are going to be asked if you want to install Miniconda for the narrow grab and everything, I found this way to work better than doing it manually because it's going to handle everything by himself. So I'm just going to put yes and press enter. And again, it's going to take uh, a few moments. Uh, so fast forward to when it's done. All right, so as you can see, it has done installing everything, the Nevergrad and all the other uh, Python dependencies needed. And finally, you will see the, the, the model running and training. And now you will be able, for instance, to uh, plot the output, but before doing that, I'm going to show you a few comments, a few uh, prompt instructions that will really help you out when merging all the upload and download of the train model and everything. All right, guys, so the training has completed. I actually run the Robin outputs as well. So as you can see, we plotted everything into this folder right here. So I'm going to type with the parentheses to exit the R prompt. Uh, I don't want to save the workspace image and I should be directed back to the um, command line of the instance I am connected to. So if I run ls, you will see there is this new um, this new folder over here. We can check the contents like this. Okay, you see this is the same that gets outputted to your computer uh, whenever you are robbing locally. So let me do exit. This will disconnect me from the instance and now with one command, which is something like this, scp minus i uh, and then the key to connect via SSH minus r root at the IP of your instance on Scaleway, and then the path of the folder that you want to download. In my case, it's going to be in the root folder and then it's going to, call, to be called Robin, uh, etc., etc. And then the path on your local machine where you want to download the uh, folder. So if I run this, it should ask me for my passphrase, and then I will see all the um, all, all the process progress basically of downloading the whole folders and each and every file inside of it locally. So as soon as it is it has done, uh, here's my folder, and as you can see, the folder has been already created. And if I open up now, it has done downloading you will see all the one pagers, all the CSV outputs. So basically you can uh, analyze the model and anything. But now comes the real game changer. Cassandra has built a complete marketing mix model builder that is 100% free at the moment of recording this video. So if you're seeing it, hurry up and go in the description below, check the description, click on the link you will find and register and start using it right now. It's, it's not going to be always completely free. Uh, this is only time limited. But basically, let's take this demo that we have over here, drop it here, and you will have a complete no-code interface where you can like select all the columns, uh, output variable type, let's go like test one, um, let's keep 
maybe a shorter window, like only one year, go next, you will get a double check. And if you're done, you will see how, how you basically, uh, Cassandra can optimize all the other parameters for you. And this goes through all the way. So once you do this, you can go to train your model in cloud, select the model, save the model, run the budget allocator, everything is handled automatically in Cassandra in a no-code interface. So seriously, check it out. It's super cool, super easy to use. Like I said, completely free at the time of recording this video. Uh, I'm really curious to hear your feedbacks. Check the description below. You'll get all the information needed. Feel free to reach out anytime if you have questions on, or, or any issue, basically. And really, thanks a lot for uh, watching this. Bye-bye.